Welcome to a new world, and in this experiment we'll be trying to see how much solar energy is absorbed um, in different modes of exposure. Uh, for now, we're just going to uh, furiously speed through the build process. It's about a minute and a half for you, but it was over an hour for me. Yay! The whole point of this test uh, came about because of a single line on the wiki that basically stated that uh, due to the solar constant uh, pipes absorbed a little bit of energy just laying around. But I didn't see that in the few hours of gameplay uh, that I've actually experienced so I wanted to see how much solar forcing actually contributed to the game. Well, I guess solar forcing only functions when you're in an atmosphere. Um, everything, uh, all of these experiments will be taking place in space, in enclosed atmosphere, uh, behind glass, which I have a theory on, um, and uh, naked pipes and radiators exposed to the vacuum of space, and uh, what kind of interaction they have with the with light and shadow and so forth. But back to past me who will now start explaining the build. So here we just have naked um, pipe segments. Well, I mean, uh, we have a, a naked pipe segment and then naked radiators. And then in here we have a um, naked pipe segment and then uh, radiators enclosed in a greenhouse um, and then in a slightly larger greenhouse to see if that um, that absorbs more energy. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pressurize this to the uh, maximum pressure those walls can take which I'm not sure what that is. Um, I think it is 200 kilopascals. Okay. I don't think. I know because I just looked it up. So once once this is done sucking, I think we're probably going to be done because it's like uh, 0.5 pascals. So that's like more than enough. Put that over here. I'm going to take this and then oops and then i'm going to remove that and throw it out into the wilderness then i'm going to take a pressure valve where is the pressure valve okay so it was called a regulator Pressure regulator. Now we don't want that yet. First, what we want to do is we want to destroy the uh, the existing segments, so that we'll get rid of any excess um, gas. Then we will build this, and we will set that to. Oops. So many different games with so many different. Uh, with blobbers, key bindings. Oops, that's the wrong way. I'll put that to 175 for now, just because I don't want to overpressurize the, uh, the greenhouses. Then we'll connect this up. We will turn this on, and that should give us forward pressure now. It's filling. And it's going to take some time, but um, 
the important bit is that they all have the same amount of pressure in them. Which is going to be slow. Didn't want it to be this slow, but I guess it's going to be. No, it's not. I'm not waiting. That's really not working very well. <laughs> There's another YouTube, uh, and I shudder to think that I've forgotten his name. Not that I'm a YouTuber. I am absolutely not a YouTuber. I am just doing this for myself and some friends. And to have something to do. Cows are evil. That's who, uh, that's who I was talking about. He um, does quite a few tests. So if about one tank e equaled one kilopas or uh, eight kilopascals, I'm going to need a lot of these tanks. This may be a super long time. So now I've blown out a window, and uh, I'm just going to wait for this to equalize. Because I mean, uh, 137. Kilopascals is is enough for now. So once um, the pipe network stabilizes, and I'm reasonably sure that both of these uh, greenhouses have the same amount of gas in them, I'm going to separate the pipes here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove that pipe right there. From that side and that side over there, so that the uh, the gas within the um, the greenhouses stays the same and it doesn't fluctuate anymore. It's, it's not going to fluctuate a whole lot, but I'd like it to be as close as possible. I don't really need to worry at this point. Um, Whether or not any of the uh, the gases, uh, wh whether or not there's going to be um, instability in this test, because everything is still pretty much connected. So as uh, as the gas rebounds back into the into the port here, just have to wait uh, for it to stabilize. Now, if I was a little more forward thinking, I might have uh, put that. Uh, vent like in the middle there so that it wouldn't it wouldn't over pressurize as as drastically as it did and it's still moving a bit so let's give it like 10 minutes now I'm not going to bother with the full 10 minutes um, because it's uh, pretty much apparent that there is a lot of um, thermal energy being absorbed there. So I'm going to try to disconnect these as quickly as possible. There, so now we have all of these pipe segments isolated, and I have fallen once again. Um, but they will be able to tell us uh, what's going on with the, uh, the uh, thermal energy that we're absorbing or losing. Go back outside. These are naked, and some of them are exposed to the sun, some of them aren't. And we see that this one is at 16.8 degrees Celsius and uh is dropping now we can tell it's dropping because the pressure is lowering the pressure will lower as the temperature drops because um, the gas has become less dense if we look at this one this one's already fairly low and dropping very quickly it's pointed away from the sun 
This one is pointed directly at the sun, and we can see that it's dropping as well very, very quickly. So it doesn't matter that it's pointed directly at the star. And it's lowering very, very quickly here. The, uh, uh, the insulated segment is to uh, stop it from uh, uh, losing any, any thermal energy through the, through the pipe. But you can see here that this one is dropping very slowly, so we can't we can't assume that this little piece of naked pipe is accounting for that um, very very quick loss. If we can keep looking at it here, see it's just going down like like gangbusters. I don't know why I said gangbusters. That was really stupid. You can tell how old I am by the idiotic phrases that I use. And then these segments here that are completely isolated, we can see that they're they're holding our pressure. That's the pressure that we started at was uh, 149 um, kilopascals. So we'll go back into the small one here. So this temperature out here is 24.8 uh, degrees. Now, uh, the segments that are outside will sort of tell us um, what temperature we started at but this one which is pointed away from the Sun for the most part is 24.8 degrees this naked one is 23 so it's absorbed uh, not as much this one pointed directly is 24.8 so it's pretty much the temperature of the um, of the room so it doesn't matter which way these um, these vents are pointed, these uh, uh, radiators are pointed, they simply do not absorb any energy from the sun whatsoever. If they're in a vacuum, they bleed thermal energy, and if they're in a uh, atmosphere, they absorb uh, energy. Now, they probably also bleed it as well if the internal temperature is... Um, Lower than the temperature of the uh, of the pipe network, but when we look at the pressure level and how it's slowly increasing here, um, we would have to like do a calculation to get the the ticks. But it seems like every two to three seconds, it's just sort of. Well, you know what. I will calculate it in um, post-production to see how many seconds it takes, and then I will insert it here. And hopefully that gave me enough time to speak. So, we're at 25.3 degrees this one's a little lower I think the um oh I guess it wasn't I don't know what I was looking at here okay so let's go back into the into the airlock and then get to um, the next place but uh, we're also going to check to see what our starting temperature was in those things. So our starting temperature was 23.3, and it was already warming by that point. And we've, I think we've got a little more temperature, 25.8. Can't be 100% certain here. And again, doesn't matter which way these are pointing. Oh, here's a nice segment here to find out. It was 24 degrees when I unplugged this one. And it's gone up 2 degrees almost. Is it still going up? So, uh, let's see what kind of things we've got for thermometers.
It would probably be a better idea if we put it a little further from the doors or the windows or anything, but this will just give us a a good rough estimate of what the what the differences are. Okay, so we have 27.3 degrees here, about. Twenty-seven point one. So clearly, the more cells of atmosphere you have, uh, the greater the warming effect. Not too terribly much, though. So maybe I'll just leave it for ten minutes and let it go up. Because this uh, differential uh, could be down to this side being attached to the to the to the cooling um, pipes over there uh, longer. Let's just give it ten minutes. So even after ten minutes, they seem to be um, fairly consistent with one another. I don't think they're going to fall too much out of lockstep. <clears throat> Let's see how much these have dropped here. This is minus 6. This is going to be really low. Yeah, that's uh, minus 154 and still dropping. <clears throat> yep. So... Let's just remove these for now, and I'm going to reconnect it up to the rest of the pipe network. Future me here, interrupting past me, because I seem to want to be a dullard on this issue. I think this experiment is fairly conclusive, and the follow-up experiment that I have after this just sort of proves that these greenhouses can be used as a thermal reservoir for warming or cooling things down. What I think is that each individual cell, uh, when in sunlight, is warmed individually and that the walls have nothing to do with it, the glass walls have nothing to do with it. Putting an obstruction in front of the wall may allow the glass to radiate some uh, thermal energy, some temperature, but I don't know if the glass itself would be the interface for that or if the atmosphere will just radiate it out for no reason. I don't know how correctly it's simulated, but I have to assume that the that the glass will uh, hold the energy in and allow it to seep out at the same time. So that's probably going to be my next experiment. I'm going to try to minimize the loss of energy as much as possible by putting shutters on the window and closing the shutters on the dark side, opening up on the light side, and see if we can if we can pump that energy up even higher. But that's for another day. But this shows that you can use passive light to warm your base or to heat something. Why you would want to do that, I don't know. I don't know this game um, as well. If this was oxygen not included or another game I would have a use for it. This was just an experiment to see how the simulation for stationers actually works. So do with this information what you will. <laughs>